Hey guys, Professor Bell Comic Book University and here for another Marvel Super Heroes Advanced Role Playing Game System Rules Explanation and we're going to be talking about movement. This is going to be part one of two, alright? This one is going to be non-powered basic movement. You gotta know how to walk before you can run. So don't even get into the whole, well, I just want to know how to fly. I'll skip to the next video, alright? Look, <laughs> first we're going to learn basic movement. Alright, so let's get started. Movement can be broken down into two different ways to use this, okay? The most simple way to, to, uh, to do this would actually be area movement, all right? By the way, you're going to jump to page 19 in your blue player's book in order to follow along with these rules. So uh, area movement is the, the first way to do this. Nice and simple, all right? One area equals 44 yards, all right? And that's horizontal, by the way. Uh... If you're going to go up and down, it's 15 feet uh, or five yards in that particular regard. We're going to get into all that good stuff later. Uh, so an area in general is going to be about a half of a city block. All right. So however many buildings you can fit onto a city block, you'd figure like two football fields or excuse me, one foot. Yeah. Two football fields, one football field, one football field for two areas. Okay. I got this. I got this. Two areas equal one football field, almost, almost, right? That's 100 yards. So basic area movement. If you've got feeble endurance, you can run one area per round. If you've got anywhere from poor to excellent endurance, you can run two areas per round. And if you've got remarkable or above, you can run three areas around. Okay, and uh, of course, the different kind of terrain that you would be running would shrink the size of the area that you're talking about. So when I'm talking about areas, make no mistake, I'm talking about all those little, if you're gonna draw whether it's uh, hexagons or, or perfect squares on your map, when you're using a map that has all the little squares or all the little shapes that you're gonna use in order to represent movement. Okay, like a chessboard, you know, I'm gonna move, you know, you can move three areas. Okay, one, two, three, boom, done, all right? That's what I'm talking about. Now, if you're gonna be making your own maps, you should consider this. If a hero has to move through rough terrain, such as a bunch of shrubs, all right, uh, that's one of the, you know, shrubbery, that's what's suggesting, bring me a shrubbery. <laughs> if you're going to be running through mud or you're going to be running in the swamp, all right, if you're going to be running through a bunch of entangling vines, you're going to want to make those areas smaller there because it's going to be harder to get through that kind of terrain. Keep that in mind. All right. That being said, that whole thing is kind of silly. <laughs> let's just let's just call facts facts. All right. Um, in many ways, it helps. In many ways, you're really dumbing it down. You're making things a lot easier. Hey, man, um, try the difference between running on uh, like a high school track. The difference between running on a high school track and running on the beach. All right. Huge difference. Huge difference. Running on a beach, you're, you're running through molasses for crying out loud. You're just, okay, I could do this. Okay, I've got no energy all of a sudden. You know what I'm saying? Like, when you're going to take that into consideration, it's not just the speed. It's also the endurance. It takes a lot more. That is that is way more strenuous activity. But, you know, hey, who am I? Anyway, this first, air, uh, first way of looking at movement, area movement, is as dumbed down as possible. You're going to do a lot of work beforehand and put down all the little squares, hectares, all the shapes that represent the boxes for, uh, you know, one area for each, each um, maneuver that your character is going to make, your players are going to make. So the judge is going to be doing a lot of work. The, uh, the opposite rule, but it, it does make things a whole lot easier, right? So measure twice, cut once. The other way to do this would be ranged movement. Now you're going to be talking about breaking out the old tape measure or the little cardboard orange measuring sticks that they got, you know, the little, yeah, uh, laminated paper that they use in the box sets. All right. You can use those, um, break out the little miniature tape measure, just like in uh, World of War, not World of Warcraft, uh, Warhammer 40K, right? I remember bringing out my Space Wolves and my Necrons going against all the bad guys. That's right, man. Take some tearing heads down, fool. But the idea here is for this game, you're talking about pulling out a tape measure. So on average, you're looking at about two inches equals one area. 
but that's if you're going to be using the regular maps that Marvel, the Marvel box sets uh, will provide. All right. If not, if you're going to be making your own maps, then you have to make your own scales. This is where you have to remember, once again, you're talking about approximately 44 yards of even terrain is going to be one area. So you're going to want to make the buildings of appropriate size. If you're going to, uh, you know, according to the streets, if you're going to make buildings that are this big, well, then you, you probably want your areas to be a lot bigger. Because remember, a half a city block is going to be one area. Now, um, what else do we have here? You're using the rules provided, make your own maps. Let's see. Okay. You're going to be measuring to the half inch. So there's going to be the half inch rule, so to speak. Let's say you've got to run uh, uh, two legs. All right. You can run, let's say you got remarkable endurance, incredible endurance, something like that. And you can run three areas. Okay. You run this three areas. And the, the trick is that two areas are straight. And then the next area is going to be a different leg. All right. You're going to be making a 90 degree angle. So you're going to be running here and then you got this much to run going this way. So like down a hallway or around a building. Okay. You can move up to 90 degrees. Excuse me. You can turn up to 90 degrees without losing any speed. Now, if you've got to do one of these and then you're going to come back around down as opposed to a full right turn, then you're talking about running up and then half speed in order to start running again. OK, but let's say you've got to run that three areas. OK, you're going to run up, you're going to run over. So two areas forward, one area this way down the hallway. Right. Let's say you've got to run through a door at this point. Now you're going to be changing things up. OK, now you can be changing things up. So uh, running through a door, mind you, this is an opened door, an open door, clearly open, no breaking through the door, no opening the door. It's already opened, opened <laughs> by running through that door. That's going to cost you a half of an area. Makes sense because the door welds and all the stuff, it's smaller and you're on average, you're not trying to destroy that. Now, if you're Ben Grimm, the thing, or, you know, somebody strong like that, Doc Samson level strong, you just charge right through that. If it's a regular old poor material strength wall, you just charge right through that. <clears throat> it's nothing. It means nothing to you. All right. Um, just walking is like a charging attack for something that's poor to typical material strength. Right. So ignore that. You walk right through it. You know, it is what it is. Um, as long as that's your intent. But if you're not trying to destroy things, you're going to be turning and, you know, shimming to get through it, whatever you're going to be doing. Uh, while getting through a door may be considered easy for us, we do it without thinking. The fact is that if you're running at full speed, that is a smaller area that you're trying to get through. So you do have to run through it. You can't just run right through. You had to, you know, turn. I'm talking about you and me. All right. Um, so that's going to be a half an area type thing. Now, let's say you go to run through that door and you don't quite make it. I want you to remember you're going to be using the half half uh, half area rule. So let's say you got to run three areas straight. OK, but then there's the door here. OK, so you're going to get up there and you're going to be at the door. You're going to stop at the door. You got to run your two areas. You get to the door rather than running through the door. You're going to be stopping at the door uh, and then boom, that's it. All right. Why don't you run two and a half areas? If that's only going to cost you a half an area, why don't you run through that? Because we measure to the half an area. So if you're able to get up to a half an area, <laughs> Uh, and, and you can't go past that, you're going to drop back down to just the regular what you were running. All right. So if you're trying to run two and a half areas, but you get, or if you try to run three areas, but you, you get stuck at the door, there's that half area taking away from you. It drops you down to the full two areas. That's what happens there. If you have to run through two doors while you're running through there, half area, half area, that's still going to be two areas that you're running. So Consider it that way. Try and plan <laughs> as you're running. You know, it, it, it depends on you. But that's basically what's going to happen to you. Um, you. You keep that in, in context. Now, the same thing is going to go for a window. All right. An open window. Now, if you've got the trajectory. 
all right, and you're able to jump through it, then by all means, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you don't necessarily have to stop, but a window is not as big. It's not as big to negotiate through as an open door. So if you're going to be going through a window, my recommendation, use your uh, agility in order to do that. All right. Use your agility, make an agility feet roll. If you make the agility feet roll, you make it through without breaking the window, without slamming into the side of the wall. If you get an auto hit, <laughs> you know, say like, like do like a, a dodge, to, uh, excuse me, an evade uh, sort of thing. If you get an auto hit, then boom, you crash into the side of the wall while you're trying to jump in. If you get uh, just a regular old miss, you break the window, all right? Anything else, you just slip right through. And of course, you can use your spider sense, your danger sense, because your body would know if it's about to, your mind would know if one part of your body is about to hit the wall, you know, and you just tuck in or, or throw your hands up. So keep all those in mind. Now, uh, if the door is closed and you need to, uh, but it's unlocked and you can open it to get through, that's going to be a different story. That's actually going to stop you right there. All right. Um, or, or excuse me, at least bring all of your movement down to half in order to open that door and run through. That's going to bring all of your movement down to half. Um, but that's assuming the door is open. What else it assumes is that you know that the door is unlocked. Because let's say you're you're running towards a door to open it and it and it's locked. You go to you know turn it and you go to run through. You just ram your shoulder and possibly your head and the side of your face right into that door. Full stop. You're also going to be taking damage as if you were charging against it. All right. And yeah, that, that's what's going to wind up happening. Now, if you've got you know really powerful endurance, hey, you're good. If you got really good body armor, you're good, man. But if not, boom, auto hit. <laughs> <laughs> now, let's say you decide, I don't care if the door is open or not, or I know it's locked. I don't care. I'm, I'm, you know, going through that door. Okay. They have rules for it, but they're kind of silly to me. They're kind of, to me, they're just so silly. It's out of the way. Oh, if it's incredible, then you have to stop after you bust through it. So you're saying that the Punisher can bust through this wall of incredible strength. Is that what you're suggesting? No, that's a little bit silly to me. So rather... We're going to do it this way. Optional rules, of course. Go back and check out my video on charging. That's right. That's it. That's all there is to it. Now, a door is going to be typical. Your average wooden door is going to be typical material strength. All right. Can you charge through a door? You know, uh, this can, and, and mind you, if you are going to be charging through a door, um, depending on your endurance, it could still stop you dead. It could still stop you right there. You know, um, consider bringing things down a little bit. If you get like, let's say a, uh, uh, a red charge, you can barrel right through this thing and then keep on running. Let's say you get a yellow, like a, like in wrestling, that's a partial hold. Let's say that instead what happens is, yeah, you're able to kick down the door or your shoulder through the door, but it does bring you to a full stop. All right. And then you can keep on going. Or you say it brings you down to half movement and you keep on running, but a, uh, a green feet, you know, a green success would instead bring it to a full stop, but at least the door is open and next round you continue running. It's all up to how you want to play it. It's all up to the way that you want to play this. A window is a window, man. A window. If you got to open the window, you're you're stopping and you're opening the window. There is no running half speed and throw open the window and then jump through it. Sorry, that's not the way that windows work. It's, whether the window is locked or unlocked, if the window is unlocked, what are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? You're not going to unlock the darn window. You know what I'm saying? You're going to bust through the window. That's what's going to happen. Fortunately, it's only to, um, uh, feeble to strength, right? So... Anybody can jump through one of those. Should you take damage when you jump through? That's really kind of up to you, you know? Like, do you, do you land when you jump through the window right there? Or do you just keep on running? Do you, do you tumble and, and keep going with it? I'd say with an agility feet roll, you don't take any damage. And you just run through it. If you fail your agility feet roll, you're able to keep on running. But you're going to take, you know, two points of damage. All right? Something along those lines. Um, now... Further, further, um, fighting, fighting while you're running, fighting or anything else that you're going to do. I don't care if you're running and you're going to try and punch somebody or if you're running and you're doing your taxes. I don't care what you do. If you're running and you're taking a call, all of that stuff is going to take from your, uh, cause some distractions, it's going to take from your concentration. So you're not going to be able to run at full speed. So 
if you plan on running and at the end of this run, you're going to punch somebody in the mouth of the, at the end of this particular turn, then you're only running at half speed on that particular turn. All right. If you're talking on the phone, if you're also fumbling with your utility belt, whatever it is that you're doing, you're going to be uh, reduced down to half speed. The only way that this changes is if you're going to be doing a charge, in which case you do not slow down at all. A charge attack is a charge attack. But mind you, a charge attack takes place when you plan on doing the actual charge, when, when, when all the circumstances align themselves perfectly. If you're running down that corridor and you have to turn to go into that, that, uh, that door, to charge through that door, you're not charging from here. All right. You're charging the moment that you turn that corner from that point straight through. That's where the charge is, even if you know that the door is around that corner. So keep that in mind. You have to brace for charge when you're going straight. Nobody charges around a corner. That just doesn't happen. I know you're, you're, you're thinking about WWE, Braun Strowman. Uh -uh. He's running around the ring until that guy is right in front of him. That's when he's bumping him off into the side of the freaking barrier or something. Um, after that, after that, we're going to be looking at, uh, vertical movement. Now, vertical movement is a funny thing to me. All right. Uh, I'm again, we're, we're going to be looking at the regular area movement across a, an even level plane, uh, is 44 yards, but it's only five yards or 15 feet when you're going vertical up or down. All right. One of my favorite lines in the comic book, or excuse me, in this, uh, this player's book is right here where it says vertical movement consists of two directions up and down. Hold your applause, please. That I love that. I laugh every time that I, I skim over that. So they suggest certain things here like, oh, uh, running up or, or, you know, vertical movement up or down is going to be, re or, no, jeez, vertical movement up is going to be uh, one, one area. Really? One area per round? So let's get this straight. I already don't like the idea that Feeble 2 Endurance gives you one area per movement, but Excellent 20, anywhere from poor to excellent 20, gives you two areas of movement. So let me get this straight. Professor X can move as fast as Daredevil? I doubt it. I doubt it, son. <laughs> All right? And then, like, that's one thing. But then when you turn around and you say something to the effect of, oh, hey, check it out, man. Moving up, like climbing upwards, up a ladder or something like that, you're reduced to one area per round regardless. Okay, so now what you're saying is, if we're in a ladder match in the WWE, and Aunt May is on this side of the ladder, and Captain America is on that side of the ladder, they're both going up at the exact same speed? I'm sorry, do we really need to have this conversation? So, no. Optional rule that, like a sum of a gun, all right? Here's some of the suggestions that I have for optional rules for vertical movement. One, if it is an incline, okay, then areas are just simply reduced from 44 feet, uh, 44 meters, meters, geez, this is my army talk, let's pretend I'm in the Marines, uh, 44 yards, okay, yeah, Marines use yards, uh, yardage, and army uses meters, we're more worldly, so, yeah, metric for us, anyway, um, like I said, vertical movement, is going to be uh, 44 yards is one area. But if you're talking about on an incline of 90 degrees or less, all right, or approximately 90 degrees, somewhere right around that, you're talking about uh, movement is reduced now to five yards per area. So 15 feet per area. That's the way I look at it. So if you're just running up a flight of stairs or a spiral stairs or one of those stairs that just keeps going up like this all the way around, cool, man, you know, where you got the stairwell. <clears throat> if you've got one of those stairwells where um, you got a level, you know, level plane and then you run around the corner and then it goes up and then a level plane and it goes up, work with that accordingly. But... If you're talking, like, so anyway, here's my optional rules, that if you're suddenly running on an incline, 90 degree incline, the areas simply change from 44 feet, 44 yards to uh, five yards. That's the change there. If it's true vertical, 
okay, like a ladder going practically straight up, or you are actually going straight up, all right? Like the ladder is plastered against it, like, you know, a fire escape ladder in those old Brooklyn Heights buildings where they just go straight up, you know? Something along those lines, okay, your movement is reduced to half, all right? This is assisted, this is, you know, you've got a, a specialty tool for climbing, all right? And you don't need to be... Uh, an expert in this tool or anything. Nobody needs a proficiency in ladders, unless you're Jeff Hardy. That's a different story. Sorry, a lot of WWE here. Tables, ladders, and chairs. Oh my. So if you're climbing up a ladder, even if it's true vertical, all right? Cool, man. Cool. We got you. You're going to be reduced to half movement. So if you're Aunt May, that's a half an area per round. If you're Captain America, it's one and a half areas per round. That makes sense to me. Now, Let's say you're going to be scaling. That is, you do not have the climbing power. You are not Spider-Man or Nightcrawler or the Human Fly or or any of those guys. You know who can actually scale walls. As, you know as a wall crawling ability. You don't have any of that. You're just a regular human or a guy in the hand, a ninja, and you just you know how to grapple onto certain things. You're going to climb up the side of a gutter or something along those lines. It is not a true tool for climbing. Heck. This could even be the uh, the rope in high school. You know what I'm saying? The, the, the old rope. You climb all the way up the, the three stories there. Three areas straight up, right? Actually, that'd be two areas because they're usually about 30 feet high gymnasium. So that's two areas straight up. Okay. If that's the case, so that's scaling assisted. You've got some kind of a, of a tool to help you climb. All right, it's not a, a specialty tool like a ladder where anybody can use it. No, you've simply got a tool to assist you in true vertical movement like a rope. Then you're talking about um, you're reduced down to a quarter movement. The final one that I would do, and again, all optional, is scaling unassisted. Now, this would have to be judge's description, uh, judge's dis, uh, um, discretion. Uh, so let's say if you're going to be crawling up the side of a building and there is no rope, all right? There are no really super huge ledges. You're literally going by your finger strength to keep on trying to climb up the side of this building. Then I can see it being one area or still a quarter area, you know, a quarter of your speed. Your speed is quartered. Plus you have to make a strength feet roll maybe once every round in order to maintain holding up the side of this building or to continue scaling upwards, all right? After that, this is going to be straight out of the player's book, uh, specifically page, 19, uh, page, page, page 21, downward movement. Now, this one's interesting. Downward movement is movement, uh, first off, I don't care about elevators. Elevators are what they are, and plus they're a whole lot faster in 2018 than they were back in 1986, all right, when this book came out. So uh, we're going to be talking about falling for the most part. The major type of downward movement is called falling. If you're going to be crawling down, I'm going to say that's pretty much the same as crawling up with certain caveats. You can make an agility feet roll in order to uh, fall at a certain way. So case in point, going down a ladder, if you're gonna scale down a, a ladder, climb down a ladder, but you're just gonna like put your feet on the outside of the ladder and just use your hands and all that, or you can be, you know, climbing up a fire pole or a rope is very different from crawling down the fire pole or rope, right? Uh, likewise, there's also things like rappelling, all right? If you were ever in the army, you know to repel down. Now, you can always do the hop, 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 which is like, okay, you qualify, but barely. Or you can do it the right way, where it doesn't matter how tall the wall is. For the most part, you're only doing one jump, you know, one leap off, and then you're going to land on the ground or through the window if you're super Chuck Norris or something like that. I've never repelled through a window. I'm just saying. That doesn't make sense to me. But... To in the cinematic universe of Marvel, why not, <laughs> right? You're talking about Code Blue running through, you know, diving through windows from a repelling rope. So, in, so consider that. You can go at full movement speed or, you know, let's say three areas per round regardless. 
uh, because you're going to be using, let's say, an agility feat in order to do that. If you fall the agility, you fail the agility feat, your hand lets go of the rope, and you're like, uh oh, or the ladder, or whatever, and you go flying, and then now you got to go for regular falling. Uh, one way or another, downward movement, true falling. The first round is going to be three areas per round. The second round, you're going to be gaining. Uh, speed. You're going to be accelerating, falling faster, gravity. It's a son of a gun. So instead of three ra three floors per round, you're going to be going at six floors per round. Mind you, each floor is one area, so 15 yards. The third round, you're going to be falling 10 rounds or 10 floors per round. And the fourth and every successive after that will be 20 floors per round. So three floors uh, on the first round, six floors plus the first original three floors. On the second round, uh, 10 floors per round on the, the, the third round. And then on the fourth round, fifth round, sixth round, 30th round, you know, if you're falling that pit in hell, it's going to be 20 floors per, or, you know, 20, 15 foot measurements, 15 areas per round until you hit the ground. Falling does not cost any damage whatsoever. It's landing that causes the damage. So consider that. And if you're landing, if you're falling, they say that you should, um, there, there are certain rules. You, you, you do indeed, this is the official rules. You simply follow the idea of charging. So uh, you're going to basically make a charging attack. And just go and watch my video on charging, combat charging, in order to understand how that actually works. Uh, but mind you, the rules in the book, the example that's given in the book, not very realistic. Six, uh, what do you call it? I'm sure that concrete on the ground, that's excellent 20 strength, is probably more than six inches. So it would probably be a lot more. Plus, they weren't counting the idea that when you're charging, you're adding two points of damage per area that you're moving through to the attack, to the charge. So since you'd be taking the charge damage, not the material strength of the of the uh, ground, which should be at least remarkable 30 because it will be more than six inches thick, then um, boom, you're, you're talking about taking a whole lot more damage than 40 points of body armor is going to be able to protect you from. She-Hulk would indeed get pretty jacked up landing. I'm not saying she'd be unconscious, but she could be. <laughs> Depends on how tall the Baxter building is. So all of this, try to keep this in mind. Movement is exactly what it is. Depending on the kind of terrain, and, and make no mistake, man, moving through swampy terrain should definitely be harder than, you know, regular running. Running against a uh, someone using wind powers against you. Maybe you're, you're doing your run and you're reduced to half, uh, half movement speed regardless. If you pass, that, that's it. Let's say if you pass your strength feet roll or you're, you know, if you're going to charge, then your endurance. You could say your endurance instead. Uh, so that's going to be entirely up to you. Um, what do you call it? You're going to actually have to make an endurance roll or a strength roll each round in order to keep on running with this wind coming after you or these tides breaking up against your face, you know? But even if you pet, if you fail, you get washed away with the tide or whatever. But if you pass, then you get to move, but you're still only moving at half speed. I can see something like that. That would make a lot of sense. Um, that being said, the only other regular movement thing without powers would be swimming, which is reduced to one area per round also, which I find to be intolerable. That means that Aunt May can swim just as fast as, who is that guy who uh, broke all those records in the Olympics? Yeah, that guy. So I, I'm just not seeing that. So I would say you can reduce speed to half movement or more realistically even probably a quarter movement unless you've got the swimming ability. You know, like let's say if you got military, all right, and your particular background was in the, the Marines. You are an excellent swimmer if you're in the Marines. They're trying to drown you, all right? They don't do that to us in the Army. They just, can you swim? Yes? Prove it. Okay, go. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and you're golden. <coughs> um, so let's say if you're a Marine or, you know, a SEAL, God forbid, or an Olympic swimmer, something along those lines, and you have otherwise a swimming proficiency, a swimming talent, 
then maybe you'd only be reduced to half speed or something to that effect. Either way, just consider, you know, literally consider a lot of different factors into this. Uh, obviously, if you're falling and someone's going to add to your des uh, density, you'd probably be falling just, a, I don't know, landing would probably hurt just a little bit more because there's going to be a lot more impact when you do land. Um, I, clearly, if somebody strengthens the material strength of the ground itself. Um, phasing while you're running should be considered, you know, definitely considered because now you're running through things. Oh, also, you can increase your speed by one area per round if you make an endurance feet roll for that round, so for each round. But now you're talking about exerting yourself maximally. So make sure you check in the, the player's handbook for exactly how your endurance will be affected there. So Ant May could then run two areas per round for a, a very limited point of, of time where she's going to have to rest a whole lot more. Uh, basically, you're going to be rolling your percentile dice every round that you that you do this. Also exhaustion. Exhaustion should be considered. And this is this is the case here where if you're you can run, let's say if you have uh excellent 20 endurance, okay, you can run for 20 rounds. If you got excellent 16 endurance, you can run for 16 rounds. Then you have to make a green feet roll to see if you can continue running. If yes, okay, you can run another 16 rounds without passing out. But then you've got to make another roll. But now you've got to make it in the yellow in order to keep on running. After that, every round you run after that will be a, re a red feet roll. And once you fail, you're resting for all those rounds. Um, either 10 to, to, to 20 rounds, you know, whatever, based on how many rounds or, yeah, how many extra levels of endurance you'd gotten to, what the feet roll was that you had to make, what color the feet roll was. So all that concerned, the next video that we do, guys, we'll be talking about movement with powers, all right? So that's where we're going to get into flight, gliding, swimming powers, climbing powers, wall crawling powers, lightning speed, all of that. So, ooh, and maybe just a little tiny bit of teleportation. We'll see. All right, guys, keep on gaming. Professor Bill, Comic Book University. Class dismissed. <laughs>